Straight up, gentlemen, who dresses better? In one corner, we've got the Italians. In the other corner, we've got the British. And yes, I know, I'm lumping some countries together. British versus Italian style. Who's got more of it? Find out, gentlemen, in today's video. Round one, attitude. Let's start things off with the English. If one word were to describe English style, it would be reserved. English style is all about the man shining, not the clothing. The clothing sits in the background. Clothing is worn neatly, correctly, and he follows proper protocols. Also, when it comes to patterns, when it comes to colors, very conservative. In summary, an Englishman's clothing serves as a neutral background so that his actions and his words can stand out. Now, with Italian style, if we were to choose one word, I would go with flamboyance. Italian men are peacocks. They love bright colors. They love for their clothing to stand out and to grab attention. Northern Italians in Milan, they love vivid colors and edgy styles. Southern Italians in Rome, they're going to pull back on the color, but they're still going to have amazing style with their simpler cuts and sophisticated neutrals. It's from the Italians that we got the word sprezzatura, meaning an effortless looking style that actually required a lot of work. So who wins round number one? It's tough. It's like comparing apples to oranges, but I got to give this one to the Italians. So let me ask you a question. What if you didn't have to choose between British style and Italian style? What if there was a company out there that took the best of both, took British construction, British attention and detail, and mixed it with Italian flair and Italian fabrics? Gentlemen, that company is Galliardi, the sponsor of today's video. And if you haven't checked out this company, you're in for a treat. So there are three things I absolutely love about Galliardi. One is the attention to detail. They're using horn buttons. Their stitching is immaculate. I'm looking at the way that these pieces of clothing are put together. They are spot on. Next up, let's talk about their amazing fabrics. Chiruti, Xenia, Laura Piana. They make sure that they only work with the best manufacturers. So as soon as I saw those names attached with them, this is a great company that you're going to get quality fabrics. And last but not least, gentlemen, let's talk price. Galliardi is a great deal. If you were to go to a store in New York, London, find something comparable, you would pay three times as much. Everything I'm wearing right here, you can find on their website. If you like the jacket I'm wearing, guys, it's the Viatorum Navy Twill Technical Waistcoat and Jacket. And besides looking good, this jacket's all about performance. It's breathable, it's crease-free, it's made from a water-resistant material, and it's got a detachable zip up front to keep you warm. Other pieces you should check out, check out their Bordeaux flannel jacket. Absolutely love this thing. It's available in slim, a contemporary fit. It's unique, a beautiful casual sports jacket you can add to your wardrobe. And if you're in the market for a suit, you want something a bit bold, check out their Galliardi suit. Absolutely beautiful in this vibrant blue. This suit is going to help you stand out from the crowd. Galliardi also has beautiful knitwear. Gentlemen, go check out their website. I'm linking to them down in the description with the best discount code you're going to find out there. Use it or lose it, guys. It's a great one. And gentlemen, stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to share with you the Galliardi story. I love when a company has an amazing history like these guys do. Really cool story, but I'll share it with you at the end of this video. Round two, colors and patterns. So starting with the English, they wear a lot of dark neutral colors. One of the reasons is the gray weather would actually wash out a lot of brighter colors. So they wear these colors that actually look good for the landscape and the type of weather they have. Now in the country and on weekends and for casual events, we do see a lot of olive and brown. This historically, again, these are country colors that you would wear when you were out hunting. So the brown, the olive for camouflage. When it comes to shirts, solids are going to rule. White is the go-to, light blue is accepted, and let's look at checks. Checks are going to be for the weekends or out in the country. Now, historically, where we're going to see the most amount of color are going to be on accessories, such as pocket squares and neckties. Neckties especially, we're going to see particular patterns. The regimental necktie perhaps being the most famous. In summary, when it comes to color, the English have rules and guidelines they like to follow. Now let's talk about the Italians in color. So they've got the sunny Mediterranean environment. They love their bright colors. They love their paisleys. They love their large prints and they love lighter colors in a wide variety of shades because it's going to keep them cooler in that hot environment. White, off-white, lavender, you're going to see pink. You're going to see light green mint. All of these work great to help reflect the sun, keep you cool, and they look great during that warm weather. They're going to wear a lot of candy colors. We're talking hot pink. We're talking apple green. And gentlemen, these colors are not just reserved for accessories or for shirts. You're also going to see these in jackets and trousers. Now, when it comes to colors, who should we give it to? Guys, I'm actually going to give this one to the English. I like the fact that they've got rules. They've got guidelines. This helps a man get started and then you can learn to break those rules. Round three, let's talk fit. So when I think of English fit, 
I think of structure. I think of build. I think of a suit of armor because it's going to accentuate his shoulders. It's going to build up his chest. It's going to trim up his torso and it's just going to make him look great. We're going to see stiffer materials. We're going to see high arm holes. Now with English trousers, we're traditionally going to see a higher waist. We're going to see more use of heavy material. We're going to see double pleats and we're going to see cuffs. Now, when it comes to the jacket gorge on the English suit, we're going to see a lower gorge with the placement of the button being lower. Now, historically, they had a bit of a looser fit. We're not talking sack suit looseness, but we are talking a little bit of room. Now, the pendulum has started to shift and we are seeing a closer fit, especially on shirts. Now, let's talk about Italian fit. So, when I think Italian fit, I think no structure. I think a work of art that is made to fit onto the body. We're going to see soft shoulders. We're going to see a full floating canvas or we're going to see a front jacket that actually has no canvas and is simply to made to lay on the body, but it's cut in a way that it looks and fits amazing. Trousers are going to have a tapered waist, no break, no cuff. Now, with the Italian jackets, we're not only going to see them cut shorter, but we're also going to see the gorge raised up because they're going to make the placement of the button a bit higher. All right, so who wins when it comes to fit? This one is tough, gentlemen. I'm going to give it a draw. Round four, gentlemen, fabric. In general, when I think about English fabrics, I think heavy and durable. This is all about the environment. You want a fabric that's going to protect you from the rain, from the elements, from the cold weather, from the wind. The fabric that's the king of England, wool. Why? Because wool can take on about 30% of its weight in moisture and still feel dry, still keep you warm. So, we're going to see wool being used in a wide variety of garments, predominantly in jackets and in trousers, but you'll also see it in shirts as well. Some of the most famous fabrics to come from the British, we've got tweed and there's a wide variety of different options here. Perhaps the most famous, we've got Harris Tweed. It comes in a wide variety of different colors and with different patterns. Other great English fabrics, we're going to see corduroy. We're going to see moleskin. We're going to see gabardine. Now, over in shirts, as I said, we will see some wools, but in general, we're going to see heavier weave cottons. We're going to see twills. We're going to see broadcloth. We're going to see Oxford, and we're going to see flannels, both in shirts and in jackets and trousers. Now, with Italian fabrics, it's all about being lightweight, breathable and having a nice flow in drape. Similar to the English, wool is going to be very strong, but we're going to see a tropical weight weave wool and sometimes mixed with a cashmere or even a mohair. So, the suit fabrics that they mill from these yarns, they are amazing. They've got a very nice drape to them. When you touch them, they feel incredibly luxurious. Let me give you a little bit of history here. The Italians have been doing this fabric thing for a long time. We're talking many of these mills have been in business for well over 500, 600 years. Now, when it comes to particular weaves and types of fabrics, we're going to see jersey, we're going to see hop sack, we're going to see a gauze weave oftentimes that allows the air to go in and out. Now, with shirts, of course, we're going to see cotton and we're going to see a wide variety of weaves. We're going to see a basket weave. We're going to see poplin. But when we look at shirts, we're also going to see silk, but you'll also see linen. Yes, it takes a bit more ironing, but very breathable because of the weave and the way the fiber is actually made. So, who wins when it comes to fabrics? Again, gentlemen, I got to give this one a draw. Both countries are kicking butt here. Now, gents, if you're enjoying this video, I would appreciate it if you would click on the like button. And if you're new to Real Men Real Style, what are you waiting for? Click on that subscribe button, become part of our community. Community, click on that bell notification so you get these videos when they first come out. Round five, let's talk about the reasons, the why men dress sharp in each of these countries. Now, I know I'm about to make a big sweeping statement, but when I think of an Englishman getting dressed, thinking about the reasoning for wearing what he does, it's all about society and where does society and what do they expect? What is the uniform? If he wants to fit in at one level, fit in at another one. And there's a system, there's a set rule, set layout of how you need to dress to look that part. Now, with the Italians, it's all about the individual. You can wear a wide variety of pieces. Yes, people are going to make judgments depending on what you wear if you wear really something outlandish. But in general, you're going to see a lot more of the peacocking, a lot more of these guys wearing things that they feel and they want to look great. A lot of this comes down to history. The Italians didn't really get into the suit making game until the 1940s. And so, we see that the suits over there are not so much constrained to class and order. All right, so who wins this round? I got to give it to the Italians. All right, gents, so it looks like the Italians just barely edged out the English, but I know a lot of you guys are going to disagree, so let me know. Down in the comments, I want to hear from you guys. Get down there. Let me know what did I miss? What should I have talked about? What did I completely forget in today's video? And gents, if you want more, go check out this video right here. I compare Italian versus English shoes, really talking about the Goodyear welt versus the Blake stitch. All right, gents, so as promised, here's the amazing story about Gagliardi. So, apparently, Salvatore, the founder, he actually served in World 
War II with the British military. And after he got out, he decided to join as a sailor merchant traveling around the world, spent a lot of time in Italy, developed taste for the finer things in life. So here's a guy that had actually gone on Salvador Row, had checked out higher end tailoring, knew what he really appreciated the attention to detail. And then he's looking at the flair, the fabrics with the Italian, and he wanted to mix it together. And so in 1964, he started this company with this vision, this dream of actually bringing these two countries and the style together, which was a big concept in that time period. And what I really love, gents, is it's a third generation family run company. So Salvatore, his son Peter came in, and now his grandson Sam is working with him. So I love stories like this. And if you go check out the website, guys, tons of great reviews free worldwide shipping. And again, guys, an amazing discount. I'm going to be linking to them down in the description. That's it, gentlemen. Take care. I will see you in the next video.